Our next speaker is a team led by Amanda Chu from Georgia Tech, empowering Denver public school system to optimize school bus operations. Uh, hi everyone, so um, also I'll be joined up here with uh, one of the collaborators at Denver Public Schools, uh, Tyler maybe, so he'll help me, he's my moral support in helping me field questions. So good morning, everyone. My name is Amanda Chu, and I am a PhD student in operations research at Georgia Tech right now. And so I'm really excited today to be able to talk to you about how we use operations research to improve uh, bus routing operations at Denver Public Schools. And this project is part of a broader collaboration with Georgia Tech and Denver Public School Systems, where we have several contributors from both organizations. And so now I'm going to let a student from DPS uh, introduce the Denver Public School Systems to you guys. Good morning, my name is Kui Cervantes and I'll be in the eighth grade this fall at Coons Miller Creative Arts Academy. I'm excited to have you join me and to show you how DPS puts students first each day DPS is huge. In fact, we are the largest school district in Colorado with more than 90,000 students. And this doesn't include the number of adults who work hard and collaborate every day on our behalf. What about the transportation team, which manages more than 315 buses and transports 30,000 students across 1,100 routes each day? And my bus drivers, they are the greatest. I look forward to seeing them every morning and afternoon. One of the things I appreciate most about DPS is the focus on equity and ensuring that students and families have access to what they uniquely need. So there you have it, a day in my life in DPS. So as we just heard from Kui, the Denver Public School or DPS system operates, um, sorry, um, over 200 schools which you can see here distributed across the map with over 90,000 students. And so DPS transports about 40,000 eligible students each year over almost 1,000 routes morning for the morning and afternoon per day. There are roughly 400 yellow buses. I imagine, um, like many of you have seen in traffic throughout the week that serve these routes daily and operate from two bus terminals, which you'll see pop up on the map. The one in the west is the hilltop terminal and the one to the northeast is the north terminal. So the school bus operations for DPS result in over 20,000 riders and 19,000 miles driven per day. The school bus routing problem um, is composed into three main subproblems, and so each year DPS starts with the stop assignment, which is determining which stops to open and assigning students to those stops, and then that solution feeds into route generation, where they take those stops and they build the routes for each of the schools. And then finally, that the routes that are generated are fed into the route assignment portion, where we determine which routes um, are assigned to which buses. And so the route assignment problem is the focus of our work in this project. A little bit more about the route assignment problem here. Uh, it takes in inputs such as the routes and bus fleet information, also reposition miles and reposition times. We care about repositioning since after a bus completes a route, um, it needs to move from the ending location of that route to the starting location of the next route it will serve. The decisions that we're tracking here are the assignment of routes to buses, and then the constraints that we consider for this problem include the dropping off and picking up of all students on time, the limit to the number of buses in the fleet, and then also there's a specific constraint for capturing the limit of the number of buses that can accommodate wheelchair students. 
And the objectives that we focused on here are minimizing the reposition miles, the number of unassigned routes, so based on the bus fleet information and the routes, which routes we weren't able to serve with our bus fleet, and the number of buses used. And we also pay attention to a unique problem of consistency, which we capture as the deviation from the current solution. And this is just an animation showing two buses serving two schools. So you can see one serves two routes, the Kip Sunshine first and then Grand Beacon, and then the other one just serves Grand Beacon. So DPS values consistency, which we define when generating a new solution, we account for the deviation for the current solution. So wherever possible, we assign a route to the same bus as in the current solution and consider the trade-offs between consistency and the other objectives. So why do we care about consistency? Consistency helps minimize impact on students, families, and drivers. Uh, specifically for the DPS system, the drivers are unionized. So that allows them to bid for the same routes if they want to, and that allows them to become more familiar with their routes as well as the students and schools that they serve on that route. And also consistency helps make implementation easier for the transportation department. Uh, based off these trade-offs, we use consistency as a secondary objective in our models. And now I'm going to let you guys hear from uh, Lonnie with the DPS transportation team about some of the issues they experience each year when planning for school bus routes. Hello. I'm Lonnie Rodriguez with Denver Public Schools Transportation. Uh, we have two terminals and I am the director over those two terminals. I was formerly the routing supervisor, so I'm very familiar with the Georgia Tech tool. Because they're going later into June and some schools are starting at actually the second week of August, my time to plan had cut to about one and a half months. So we've lost a lot of time in planning. We're at about 60 to 70 drivers short with about 220 drivers currently on staff. The tool has helped us overall. We're very happy with, so oh, thank you. So as you guys heard very quickly from Lonnie that they experience each year dealing with bus driver shortages and also with the reduced amount of time for planning. So this, this process usually takes a dedicated few weeks or that time period of a month and a half to make all of, go through each step in the bus routing problem and then try to verify and make any changes as necessary. And that doing this manually is very difficult to account for with a thousand different routes and 400 different buses. So our project purpose um, and main focus is to develop a multi-objective optimization model and a decision support tool that helps enable DPS to create these bus route assignments from scratch, compare new and current solutions, and then also analyze these changes to assignments. So I'm going to go into some of the nitty gritty details about the models. I'll try to highlight what the math represents and so in our decision variables, we do some pre-processing to help cut down the number of feasible assignments that we are keeping track of in this set AIJ, which capture the capacity and time feasible bus route assignments. So whether a route's student load will fit on the bus and if um, buses can be served one after the other on time. And so then our decision variables are basically keeping track of which bus serves which route and in which order. And this is based off, again, that set of feasible uh, bus route assignments that we're keeping track of. And then also we introduce a dummy variable that helps to keep track of which routes weren't served so that when DPS creates these routes and they may have a problem or not being able to serve them all, they can look at that route and do more in-depth analysis um, later to figure out why that route may have not been able to be served. And so I'm just gonna highlight the objective functions here that I talked about earlier. We minimize the cost of using a bus, the penalty for not serving a route, the cost of repositioning of miles, where we capture the reposition miles from the terminal between the routes and back to the terminal. 
And then also we introduced this penalty for deviating from the current solution where we keep track of the set of current bus assignments in the set G. And then we also have these different objective function weights to help allow DPS to create a variety of solutions that balance these different costs. The constraints are the upper bound on the bus fleet, as I talked about earlier, maintaining the bus route assignment sequencing. So this will look very familiar to some of you as a flow in, flow out constraint in network flow problems. Um, and then we also have the constraint where all routes must be served by a bus if possible, and then if not, we capture it using the dummy bus constraint or variable. And so I'm now going to talk a little bit about the stochastic optimization model, which we use to do some sensitivity analysis on the travel time uncertainties. And this model is an extension of the deterministic optimization model, so I'm only going to present on the updated variables and constraints. So we incorporate uncertainty with the random, ra with randomized reposition time matrices as scenarios. And so I'll let cap U represent the set of random reposition time scenarios. Um, P superscript U represent the probability of scenario U ambiguous. And again, we do pre-processing here, but now we introduce uh, the set of capacity and time feasible bus route assignments with the scenarios. And so the updated decision variables are tracking these feasible bus route assignments um, and the sequencing based off the scenario U. So for the objectives and the constraints, we introduce some auxiliary variables to keep track of statistics that we want to use in the objectives. So that's the expected delay for a scenario, the delay up to route J for a scenario, and then the actual start and end time. So now we have this notion of maybe for one assignment in scenario, we can serve route J then K on time, but for a different scenario, route K is gonna be delayed. And these variables help us to keep track of that. And so now we can introduce minimizing expected delay into the objective function and subject to the timekeeping constraints or time tracking constraints. So looking at the actual start time for the first route and the subsequent routes, and then the related actual end time, which is gonna be the maximum of when we actually arrived plus the duration of the route or when we plan to arrive. And then finally, we keep track of the delay for a route based on the scenario as the difference between the actual time plus duration minus when we plan to arrive. And so now I'm going to give an overview of the decision support tool that we created and what the inputs are for that. So just high level, the user provides information about the bus fleet, the routes, and the reposition time and distance matrices. And then they can specify the costs that we described earlier, and the, we also introduce time buffer values so that DPS can add in some fixed buffers for these base reposition times to try to handle travel time uncertainty. And then all of that together fed into the model gives us the output, which is the bus route assignments at a minimal cost. And so here's a picture of the main menu of the tool that we built in Microsoft Excel and using VBA to make um, user-specific macros. And so I'm gonna walk through each one of these uh, a little bit slowly just to show the process of building and building the model and getting the results. So to generate the input for the model, uh, the user can put in the average bus speed for calculating the reposition times. They also put in information for the total number of buses in the fleet, plus some terminal information about which buses are stored at which terminal and how many there are. And then they can also specify the time buffer par parameters to modify those reposition times. And all of this together allows the user to generate the data input files for the model run. And then to actually solve the model, the user can specify the different weights for the objectives that I talked about earlier. And then also there's some optional constraints that can be included, like earliest departure time from the terminal for the bus drivers, uh, bounds on the allowable slack time, time uh, between routes. And then you can also force the same first and last route assignment if desired. 
And all of this together creates a user-defined model that's solved in the background using GNU Linear Programming Kit, or GLPK. And if any, opt but any optimization solver can be used if desired in future runs. So finally, once the models run and outputs the results, the user can select some histograms to look at key assignment statistics of the assignments, and then also they'll get an overview of the high-level solution comparisons between what the current solution was and what the model solution was. So you can see how many segments or how many routes were unserved, how many buses were used, and from which terminals, and then also the total reposition miles and times for that for the model solution. And then the model will be, the model solution will be read in for a deeper analysis, which I'll go over in a second. And then also because this workbook is kind of full of different inputs and different tabs for the outputs, there's some macros built in to help navigate the tool a little bit more quickly than having to click through the tabs. So here's a sample of the output solution for the bus route assignments. You see here that there's the current bus assignment with its capacity and its wheelchair capacity, and then you see the model bus assignments with the same information, the route details, which DPS refers to as segments, and then the bus terminal. So here you can see that there's some green highlighting, and that helps just be a quick visual of the amount of consistency between the original assignments and the model assignments. So if they're both green, it's the same one. If they're not green, then we had a different bus number, bus be used to serve a route. And then there's also address information, but we didn't include it due to some uh, privacy issues. And then finally, there's the remaining route details, which just show all the timestamps and the reposition times and miles for each leg of the trips. So then now I'm just gonna talk about some of the computational results that we saw in benefits. Uh, we looked at the 2017-2018 routes as comparison and trying to build a case for using this tool at DPS. So we looked at an experiment on varying the weights in the deterministic IP, and we saw that we were able to see the opportunities to reduce costs by using less buses and trade-offs in number of buses used and number of unserved routes. So. You'll see here a chart for both the morning and afternoon routes where the star represents the DPS's current solution. And so just to highlight here is that there, with all the other dots, which are the model solutions, there's a variety of opportunities to minimize the number of buses used. Here, for both of these cases, it's around 15%, and we don't need to sacrifice service levels to achieve that. And then this is just a highlight of a short analysis we did for how to hedge against travel time uncertainty and looking at the stochastic IP as a comparison, which I'll call the SIP. So the SIP allows us to build robust solutions using multiple reposition time scenarios. But then for us, because we wanted something that was a little easier to implement, we introduced a slack penalty in the deterministic IP or DIP objective so that we can encourage solutions with a good slack time range. In our case, it was about 15 to 30 minutes. And uh, this helps the DIP model to prefer assignments where there's some slack between routes, which can help bus drivers have some buffer time between routes that may have some unexpected delays or irregular delays that occur. And so we see from that, you will see two charts here for morning and afternoon for the average slack time and for the different, the current solution, the deterministic solution with no slack, the deterministic solution with slack, and then the stochastic model for different levels of um, buffer time uh, values. And then you see the maximum slack time. And the purpose that I'm showing this here is that you see that the SIP, which you'll see is the orange line on the top, performs better on average, which is what we expect. But then the DIP, which is now the blue line, shows that with Slack that we're able to reduce the maximum Slack time. So that's really beneficial because now, instead of having some bus drivers waiting around 30 minutes to multiple hours between routes, you can actually have them 
um, be able to still have some slack to get between routes, but they're not waiting around too long to start moving to the next route. So now I'm going to let you hear from Tyler uh, in a video clip about how the, they started trying to use this tool in the implementation process of, that he experienced. Hello, my name is Tyler Maybe. I am a operations analyst underneath the planning and analytics team. I was one of the key members on the design and implementation team for the route optimization tool. We really started to get the project kicked off and being implemented in the spring of 2018 after we ran a pilot with one of our schools, came back very successful. And so we decided as a group that we were going to use the route optimization tool to help us plan for the 1819 school year. In the second year of implementation, we decided that we we're going to add some buffer time in areas of town that we knew faced some traffic problems. It allowed us to have an output that better reflected some of the realities that our drivers see out on the road. And just to highlight some of those potential savings again, identified by the tool for the 2017-2018 school year, they saw an 8% decrease in the number of buses used and a 20% decrease in the repositioning times. And we see that this in large part is due to more routes being assigned per bus. So you can see this chart, these charts here for morning and afternoon and these different time buffer values that with no time buffer, you can see a large decrease in buses used, but then even with a time buffer, you still see decreases in the number of buses used. And so, and by having more routes assigned per bus, we see less buses equal to less repositioning time to and from the terminal. So again, now I'm going to, yeah, and so this, this, these potential savings led to the implementation in 2018-2019 year and the 2019-2020 year. And again, I'm just gonna have a short video where Tyler explains the impact of the tool for use in those years. After we applied the solution, uh, one of the main things that we learned was uh, route packages were actually making more sense to the drivers. You know, drivers weren't going to have to drive across town. They actually stayed in a specific region because the tool found the efficiencies of one bus staying in, for instance, the southeast part of Denver instead of going from the southeast to the northwest. And because of this, that really increased our buy-in and it allowed us to gain enough confidence that the routing team, the transportation team, wanted us to continue work with this tool into the 2019-2020 route planning year. Also, we're looking at moving it into the next school year as well. This tool can't cure the bus driver shortage that DPS faces on a daily basis. However, it has helped transportation to continue to provide a high level of service to the thousands of families that rely on them every day, while also remaining an efficient system as possible with the limited resources that we have at our disposal. And so finally, I'll just wrap up here. Uh, DPS struggled with a manual planning process for school bus route assignments each year. And so we developed a reusable decision support tool that enabled DPS to create robust bus route assignments from scratch in a fraction of the time with a focus on service and cost compare new and current solutions for consistency, and perform what-if analysis in regarding potential changes to those assignments. And that's all I have. Thank you.